Hello again and welcome to this lesson. This time we are factoring trinomials and we're specifically looking at trinomials where the leading coefficient is equal to 1. Now if you have no idea what I'm, uh, I just said, probably don't know what I mean by trinomials. A tri, as we all know, refers to 3. Okay, trinomial and nomial refers to parts, three parts. Uh, not parts, but parts, three parts. So trinomial is an expression with three terms. Now the general one, the most common one that we are going to look at, or actually the specific one we're going to look at is x to the power of two, okay? That has a coefficient that we are going to call a plus b, this time with x plus uh, to the power of one and then c, where I don't have any x uh, factor in there. Okay, so one thing you'll notice here is that there's not an x in every term, so I can't take out a common factor. But what I do have is decreasing exponents. Okay, where and one thing you'll always notice is that this one's exponent here is half of that one's exponent there. So another example of a trinomial might be something like this x to the power of 4 plus b x to the power of 2 plus c or um, what else can we look at a x to the power of 8 plus b sorry no let's do it x to the power of 6 plus b x to the power of 3 plus c that's another example of a trinomial expression so uh, in general, we're going to have this one where it's a square uh, to the power of 1 and then this one is actually x to the power of 0. I'll, I won't go into that now, but that's actually what that is. Uh, but just so you know that these can also fall under the same rules that we are about to explain. Now, first of all, we're going to look at a equal to 1. In other words, the coefficient of the leading term. The leading term is the term with the highest exponent. In this case, it's the one with x to the power of 2. This leading term is has a coefficient of 1. So typically, we are looking at x squared plus bx plus c. Now, before I go on to sh give you the rules, let me first just show you how do we actually get to this. Remember, we're trying to factorize an expression like this, and factoring means uh, writing it as the product of two e or more expressions. In this case, what, what can we multiply to get three terms? Now, let me show you an example. So, x plus s times x plus t. What will happen when I multiply these binomials? Okay. Uh, I get x plus s that's distributed to the x and I get x plus s that's distributed to the t. Then I distribute the rest. So now I get x squared. Uh, that's now when the x distributed there plus sx plus tx plus st. Okay, now you can see if I multiply a binomial with a binomial, I actually get a, uh, in this case, I get four terms, okay? But notice here that if S and T were to be numbers, if this was something like 2 and T was something like 3 or whatever, if S and T were numbers, then this would have been 2x and 3x. So I would be able to add them together. So this can actually be x squared plus, now look how I take out a common factor here for the middle one. I add s and t together, okay, and that gets multiplied with x plus s and t, okay. Now notice this, the coefficient for the leading term is 1, okay, just as there. The coefficient for the x term, there's the x term, coefficient is what I'm multiplying in front of it, is b. So I get that b is equal to the sum of these two values. If I take this and this together, I get my a coefficient for my middle term. And when I multiply these two, I get c. So when I multiply these two together, 
I get C S times T and this is exactly the rules that I am going to use to factorize this so when I have X squared plus BX plus C what I'm going to do is make two brackets in the one bracket I'm going to put X as well as in the other bracket because X times X is going to give me the X squared now for the middle term that B is going to be the sum of these two this these two values that I'm going to add here or right in there and C is going to be the product of those two values so what I'll do is exactly this I'll find factors of C find factors of C in other words what times what will give me this value and I'll do examples in the next video you'll see it's so simple find factors of C to that adds up that adds up to B so two things that I can multiply to give me whatever this value is and when I add them together I get whatever that value is and that would be the two values that I write in here so in the next video I've looked at the theory now in the next video I'll look at some examples and you are going to be shocked at how simple this actually is I'll see